everyone welcome back to the studio I'm Tammy at Tam's Creative Corner and today we're gonna work on another resin seascape this time I'm gonna do a coral pink beach and maybe a little bit of a darker ocean I always tend to go for lighter brighter oceans but I kind of want to offset that bright pink beach with a little bit of a darker ocean and I'm still going to add some of that bling under the ocean to give it a little bit of sparkle. Not so crazy like last time, although you guys love that video. <laughs> but I'm always experimenting and trying new things. And so come on, let's get started. I like to get out my pigments and kind of play with the color idea I'm going to use in my resin. I love that black diamond coral pink color and I think that's going to make a great beach. You can see we've just used leftover plywood and my husband built a back frame on it for me and I also taped it off so the resin doesn't drip underneath. Then I sealed it with wood sealer and painted it white and now I'm going to lay down my base colors. They won't be quite perfect but it just gives a little bit of color underneath my resin and it also gives me an idea like a rough draft of how I might want this painting to look. This pink isn't going to be the same pink as that coral beach, but it's still a good undercoat and it gives me kind of a guideline for when I pour my resin. And I also paint my sides because this is going to be a floating piece on the wall where you will see the sides. So I just want to make sure those look finished too, like the ocean and the beaches coming over the sides. I will put links to any supplies that I can in my description below the video. Just hit the little down arrow underneath the video and that will open up the drop box where you'll see the description and all the goodies listed below. I recommend wearing a respirator when working with resin. Even though I'm using art resin this time which is a low VOC and safe resin. When you heat it up a lot, like I do in my seascapes, it still emits fumes and I'm really sensitive to them. So I recommend wearing a respirator better safe than sorry. Art resin is a one to one ratio so it's half hardener and half resin. Give it a good stirring for a few minutes before moving on and adding in your pigments. Now I'm adding in that beautiful black diamond coral pink color for my beach because I really want a bright vivid beach on this painting. And so the rule of thumb for most is 10% pigment to resin ratio. You kind of just have to play it by ear because all pigments are different, but that's a pretty good rule of thumb to stick by. You can see I make this really opaque. I don't want you to see through to that other layer of pink. And I love the way this black diamond pigment has that kind of pearlescent look. It gives it kind of a two-tone look when you pour it. After I spread it all around, I get out my little culinary torch and I pop those bubbles and it also will give it a little more dimension and cool interest when you run heat over it. Can you see the two-tone look that it's getting? It's pretty cool. Now I'm going in with a crushed and tumbled recycled glass with a little bit of a tint to it really doesn't matter if it has the tint because it will pick up the color of the resin below it. And then I'm going to go in with my diamond dust and sprinkle it over the beach. You can see it's a little bit sparkly and it'll give it a little bit of a grainy beach look. So it won't be so smooth as the waves settle over it. Here I'm just taking a little bit of resin and I'm mixing in a little bit of this holographic glitter and I'm putting it on my board just to see how it'll look. 
because I don't want to do the whole thing unless I'm sure that it's going to look the way I want it to. So once I'm satisfied with that, I go ahead and dump a whole bunch in to my resin and begin spreading it out all over the board. Right about now I'm thinking, boy, I wish I would have done a lot more glitter like I did in that last seascape. So I go ahead and I take some of that blue holographic glitter that I used last time and I sprinkle it over the resin while it's still sticky and wet. That way I still get a little more glitter. But this ends up being a pretty dark seascape, so you do get little hints of the glistening underneath the surface, but it's not as crazy as last time. But I still like it. They can't all be bright and shiny, right? Here's a little close-up of it, and it is time to cure this first layer of resin. Here's a little look at my curing station. I'll link it in the description below because this thing has been a lifesaver for keeping dust out of my projects. After it's dry, I go in with my all-purpose scotch tape and I'm going to build the layers up on this so I'm creating a dam so that the resin doesn't pour over the sides at this point. Because there is texture and I have that glass crystal line at the beach, I really need to build the ocean up so it flows over it the way I kind of envision. Once you get your tape laid down, you burnish the sides, you just rub them with a popsicle stick and it helps seal the tape to the board. Now I'm going to use these amazing, my favorite TCP measuring cups because they have ratios on them. So if your resin's one to one or one to three, you can just simply look at the lines and it'll tell you where to pour to. They're super awesome and they're reusable. You'll see how I pull the resin out in the next couple of clips. So I'm mixing again my art resin, my one to one ratio, and this time I'm just pouring a clear coat over the ocean, and then I'm gonna let it cure again before moving on and adding in some color. I just have to warn you, this is six layers of resin in this piece, so if you get bored, just fast forward. But I kind of want to show you all the steps because a lot of people like to see how I do put these together. And after that layer has cured, I mix up some more resin and I'm going to try out this countercultured pigment and see how it looks. And because I know it's really concentrated, you can see I put one little drop into that probably a third of an ounce of resin and look at how beautiful and thick it is. So you can make it as translucent or as opaque as you'd like. And now that I know that I like it, I'm going to move on, mix in a little bit of my white. Same thing, this pigment is like a couple of drops and that's all the white I'm gonna need for this whole layer. A little goes a long way. And now I'm taking that pigment that I mixed into my small cup of resin and I'm gradually adding it into my big cup of resin until I get the transparency that I want so that I can pour the next layer on my C.
So I just spread it out over my board and make sure I go all the way up to the tape. And I'm still trying to build up this layer because of the glitter sticking through and I want to build it up to the top of those crushed tumbled glass rocks. And here's a good tip for you. Just double glove that way once you get done spreading your resin around you can take one glove off and pick up your torch and it won't be a sticky mess. And now I'm going in and just drizzling a little bit of that white pigment to create a little bit of wave effect. I know that this is going to have many more layers on it so I'm not going all out on my waves yet. I'm just starting to create some depth and dimension in my water. And I absolutely love this heat gun. The back has an adjustable temperature that you turn and it has two speeds. So it works perfect. If I'm getting too hot, I can turn the temperature down. If I'm overcooking my resin, which I tend to do occasionally. <laughs> but yeah, it's a great gun and it's really reasonable. So I'll make sure that that's linked down below too. And now I'm adding in some clear resin. I always keep clear resin on reserve after I've mixed it because I want to create a place to lay in some white and add a little bit of a wave effect in there along that crystally rocky shoreline. By adding the clear it gives your pigmented resin a place to run because if you were to put that white pigment over the dried resin it wouldn't go anywhere it wouldn't really do anything. To get that wave effect and that foamy look you need to add it into another base of clear resin and that way when you heat it up it'll spread it around creating those cells and that cool wave foamy effect that we all love. And now I have a little bit of leftover of that dark pigmented resin and I'm just adding that into my C, just building in a little more depth and dimension and really because I don't like to waste resin so we're using it up. And now that that layer has dried up we're ready to move on and here's how you can reuse those cups. You just leave your stick in against the side and the next day you can pull all that resin right out and start again. So after mixing my new batch of resin I divide it into some smaller cups leaving most of it in my big cup and now I'm going to add in a whole bunch of that counterculture DIY pigment that we used the other day and we're going to make this a lot darker because it just wasn't getting what I wanted. And so now it's going to be like a really deep turquoise or emerald look. And although it's a lot darker than I thought it was going to be, I really like it and it's something I hadn't done before. So this is a new experience for me and we're on our fourth layer. And right about now I'm thinking, wow, that is really dark. <laughs> so I go in with that extra clear resin that I had on reserve and I'm putting it in between and over and that'll help dilute it a little and give my ocean some contrast so it's just not all dark. That's better. Now I'm taking a little bit of my DIY counterculture. It's a lighter pigment and I'll list all the names of these below because I don't have them in front of me and don't have them memorized. But I'm just adding this in to give it a little more contrast in the ocean.
And again, using my heat gun to blend it all together and move it around. And we're ready to cure this layer. Boy, I told you this had a lot of layers. And here we are again using that same cup. See, it comes right out. And now that I have this nice built up dimension, I'm gonna remove my tape. So very carefully, I just heat my tape up. Try not to catch it on fire. I always have a fire extinguisher in the studio, but it comes right off if you heat it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna trim down the edges. It kind of left some sharp edges because it cured with the tape on. And then I'm gonna start pouring my fifth layer of resin. After I mix it up, I divide a little bit into one of my small clear cups, adding in a little bit of that armor white so that I can create some waves. And the rest of it I'm just going to pour over the top of my seascape because I kind of like the color that it is right now and I want to just retain it. And this clear coat is giving me a nice base to pour in my white pigment and create some more of those cool waves. Now using my heat gun I just simply spread it around and move it back and forth and that will create some of those cool cells and that foamy look that you see in these paintings. So this piece is ready to be off to the cure station and this time I let it cure for the full three days, three or four days, so that I can sand it down because you want it fully cured before you start sanding. And make sure you wear your respirator because you don't want these little dust particles getting into your lungs. So I'm just using a really fine sandpaper. I'm sanding down the edges to round them out. And then I had a couple spots on the surface that I wanted to sand out. And don't worry, the resin will fill it right back in. So I paint the sides. I clean the board up with an alcohol wipe. And I'm ready for my sixth and final layer of resin. Wow, this has been quite a long process. <laughs> And I'm not done making waves yet. So first I'm going to go in with a little bit of alcohol ink mixed with resin and a little bit of that lighter DIY counterculture pigment. And then you can't really see it as I pour it into the water. But when I add my white, it'll help turn some of the waves a little bit blue so that they look like they're under and over the ocean. And it's time for the final cure. If you like what I'm doing, I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment below. That helps me out a lot and lets me know to keep making these videos for you. And here's the final product. I had my husband hold it because he actually happened to be wearing a matching shirt. Thanks for watching everyone. I appreciate you all so much. Have a great day and happy creating.